Hi, my name is Sarah and I'd like to welcome you to the Knitting in Tangents podcast. At least I think that's going to be the name. I haven't totally researched it. I've done a little bit and most of the time where I've seen Knitting in Tangent in the same title is with a blog post or a podcast where they're saying that tangents might occur and I'm just going to assume that they will so we'll start with that. It may have to change in the future, I don't know, but for now, it'll work. So, like I said, I'm Sarah. Thank you for tuning in. I can't see what I'm doing. Just so you know, I don't have a monitor at this point to watch, so I'm just staring at the camera. And I hope things work, and I hope that the, the autofocus is gonna be dependable. We'll see. I'll watch it, and if it doesn't work, you may not see this, so. Anyway, that's me. I live in western New York, so we have snow. Not a lot right now, probably only about four or five inches. Um, I also have two dogs. They, and they like to bark. I'm kind of surprising they're not barking at the snowfall, but because sometimes it seems like they're barking at rocks or leaves or whatever. Anyway, so I may have to pause now and then if they kind of go crazy, like when the neighbors take their dogs out for a walk or something. Um, I think maybe in the behind me on the stairs you can see Jill's feet. She's our oldest. They're both cattle dogs of one sort or another. Jill, we think, is a, a blue healer mix. My husband likes to say that she's part Kelpie at least least part. Um, I'm not so sure. It doesn't. She's a sweetheart, so who, it doesn't matter. Robbie is our youngest. He's not quite two years old, and he is a blue healer, and he's he's sweet, but he's crazy. You know, all the stories are true. They're crazy, but they're a fun kind of crazy. He's right over here on the sofa, so that's why I'm doing looking over there. Um, he may come join us. He likes to visit people. Otherwise, you may see him hanging out on the stairs at some point as well. So get that out of the way. And let's see. Knitting. I have been knitting I don't know how long. My grandmother taught me when I... I don't know how old I was. I'm thinking somewhere around 10. Um, we went to her house. She lived outside of Chicago. We went to visit her. And all the girls in the neighborhood that I knew, which I think were two of them, but, you know, that was good, had learned how to knit, and that's what they were spending all their time doing. And so, of course, it was like, Graham, Graham, you got to teach me how to knit. Because I knew she knew how, but it wasn't anything that had ever really registered with me before. So she did, and I'm sure I struggled through a few awkward days there. And then it was over, and I didn't knit again until I was probably in my late 20s, maybe. And then it was probably another 10 years before I kind of got serious. I started working in a yarn store. No, it wasn't that long. Another four or five years. Um, I worked in a yarn store for a while and decided that I needed to get back to doing artwork. So. I was taking classes at a, a local community college um, and decided that I needed to go back to real school. So I applied for master's degree programs and, and got accepted to one in Rochester, New York. That's how I ended up here. I started out in Seattle, more or less. Um, and that's how I met my husband and that's how I live in New York now. So knitting is still pretty important to me. I knit a lot. I have started dyeing yarn. I sell it under the name Propanicus Moon. Some of you may know of it. It's I am not real good at marketing and promotion, so you may not know much about it. Um, it's been used by by both Boonitz and Laura Nelkin to, to design a couple of shawls, um, both of which were variations on something else that they had done. So 
that was really exciting. And I've knit the Laurel, Laura Nelkin one. I have not yet knit the Boo, Boo Knits one. It's because I got a little burned out on lace. I love it. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And I'll show you some things in a little while. But that's what's happening with that. And dyeing, so that's knitting and sort of dyeing all together. I am right now getting ready for a show, small sale at the end of February, and another even smaller one at the beginning of March. The one in March I'll also be teaching a, a basic brioche hat knitting class. So it's going to be very basic because it's all, I've only got about two to maybe three hours. I don't know. It's a very short class. And if you have eight or ten people, you, you can't you can't show them quite all the different things. So it's going to have a regular ribbing on the hat and then brioche and then it'll go back down to it. It's going to be a two color brioche and then go back down to a single strand around for the decreases around the top so it'll have a bit of a bullseye effect. And then I'm thinking people can put pom-poms on it or whatever. So um, we'll see. When I get that going I'll show that to you as well. So what else? Let's see. Knitting, dyeing, and designing. That's the latest thing. Since I've been doing all the dyeing, I keep thinking that I need patterns to show what can be made with the yarn. And, oh, now I've lost it already. So one of the, I've got a couple. There's a, a, a shawl, just a basic triangle shawl that, that I've made and put directions in. It's, it's more like, like the sock recipes, but it's a shawl recipe. So you can do just basic stockinette or garter stitch and have some just knit, you know, yarn over knit two together lace panels in there, stripes. And it's a good beginner lace shawl. And I should have brought that, but I didn't. I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Anyway, um, I'll show it to you later. Next time maybe if I have to stop for the dogs or if my son decides to come home. I'll bring it in for that the next half. The one that I've start started recently, and oh, I have a special thing here. One second. I've decided that maybe having this gray card here, it's a folder, but um, will help with the, I don't know how close it needs to be, with the focusing and color. So this is a sock I've designed. This is it. I don't have sock blockers, so this is after it's been on somebody's leg. I don't know who. And it's just a very simple lace pattern. And that will be coming out soon. I just have to get the pattern tweaked a little bit more and make sure that the whatever it is I'm using to do the charts will convert what's the right word? Convert maybe and be able to be downloaded and uploaded and all those things. Because some things that I've used don't and others do so I just have to figure out which is which works the best and get that put in there. Um, so that'll be coming out soon. I'll let you know that'll be on the, the Ravelry site which I should probably talk about, shouldn't I? I have a Ravelry, Ravelry group called Friends of Propanicus Moon and it started out for the yarn and I'm just going to continue it with the podcast because I don't need two groups. It's right now very small and quiet and nice and you can see things that people have made from it and if I need a test knitter I put it up there. If I have other plans I usually put them up there. Sometimes I don't put them up until the last minute. Maybe I'm kind of hoping this this whole podcast thing will get me more organized. I know hopefully some of you aren't laughing too much because you know just how much that doesn't work. I will see. Um, so hopefully I'll put things up there. Anyway, the next thing I thought is probably people wonder what Propanicus is and why there would be a Propanicus moon and why all that started. Well, it's a long story and as some people say, actually our friend Tilly Trout has said, it's like a flippin' fairy tale. 
So here it is. As I've said, I, I live in western New York. It, it gets cold here. You may, some of you remember from the news last year, Buffalo, which is only about 50 miles away from me, got 10 feet of snow one weekend. Seriously, 10 feet of snow. My husband was trying to drive home. He, he works more up toward Rochester, which is 50 miles north and east of us instead of just west, which is Buffalo. Um, it took him at least seven or eight hours to get home, an unusual one hour drive. He had to stop numerous times. Luckily there were places he could go in and sit out into, oops, sorry, I just kicked the tripod. Um, sit out until the plows had come through and cleared enough for people to get through. It, it snows here. It gets cold. It doesn't get as cold here as it used to. It used to get, you know, in the winter, about this time of winter, a normal high temperature would have been 10 degrees Fahrenheit. It would not be unusual for a high temperature to be 10 to 15 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. It, it's cold. It was cold. Last year it was sort of that cold again. This year hasn't been too bad. Um, so anyway, it, it used to get cold and when we were first together and I first moved out here, it was the second or third winter I'd been here I think. It was, there was a forecast where there was going to be at least a week when the temperature would not get above zero and actually would not get especially close to zero. That is all Fahrenheit and I was going to do a conversion for Celsius and I just can't remember, I didn't remember. So um, if, it, if it is important you can look it up I suppose. So anyway, we, our heat was, was through propane at that time. And propane has to be delivered. Um, natural gas, there's pipelines that come directly to your house so that, that you get the gas. Propane, you have a big tank in your backyard, which my husband always said was like having a big bomb back there, um, which is why we changed. But anyway, he went to check the propane tanks before this cold spell hit, and it said we didn't have any or maybe enough to get through the next day. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that was a problem. He was in school and not working, and I was not working at the time, so we didn't have, or if I was, maybe I was working. Yeah, I must have been, because we did have money coming in in a few weeks, but we didn't have any at the time to buy another tank full of gas. So we just decided to wait and see what happened. We we found some some small heaters that we could put around the house and hopefully get through it and it wouldn't be too bad and then, then we could get more gas. Anyway, the propane lasted. It lasted for, well, it, took, it was about two weeks until we got another check. Must have been a paycheck. And um, so it lasted at least those two weeks, and we ordered more, and I have a little Jilly right below me right now, and she may bump into the tripod. She wants out. She's going to have to wait. I'm sorry, sweetheart. You'll be okay. Um, so we did. It lasted. It lasted those two weeks, and we were totally amazed. We got more propane, and, you know, life went on. Nothing terrible happened. And so after a while, you know, we kept, you know, calling it the miracle of the propane tank. And we still do. But, so we decided to give it a name. And one time, we were somewhere, and we were coming home, and we had the kids, and they were little. They, I, I call them my kids. They're my stepchildren. Um, but I've been with them since they were five and six, I think, or six and seven, something like that. So I've been with them quite a long time because they're the oldest just turned 30 now. Um, so we were coming home and it was it was winter, whatever it was. I don't think it was that year. I think it was the next year. 
and we started talking about this and somebody said, yeah, it's like the 15 days of propane. So we changed it and first we called it Propanica. We didn't like that so much, so we changed it to Propanica, Propanicus. And this, to, you know, just to kill time on the way home like you do when you have kids. We started making up songs. We started singing the 15 days of Propanicus. <coughs> no, Robbie. <coughs> okay. I may have to stop here in a second. Can I finish my story? Maybe. And, you know, each day is like the 12 days of Christmas, but each day you got something warm. You got hats or mittens or blankets or coats or sweaters, socks, anything warm, fire, hot chocolate, whatever. And over the next few years, we just sort of kept talking about it, Propanicus, and calling it Propanicus. And then one time, one year, we decided to have a party during, it was in the middle of February, which is traditionally the coldest time of year here. And we decided to have a party then. And we did. We invited 10 or 15 friends. And the, the rules for the party were you had to bring something hot. And we would turn, turn the heat up. My bud. And just hang out and enjoy being warm when it was so cold out. And we did have people drive off the roads trying to get to our house because they didn't know where the road was. But anyway, so Propanicus turned into a party. And it was a fun party. We have This will be the second year we haven't done it, but we did it for at least 10 years before that. And it was always hot food, and I would make a chocolate cake with, with hot pepper in it. And people would bring just amazing amounts of hot food and there was, you know, a lot of people would bring cinnamon schnapps or something like that just because they thought it was silly. And, and one year my husband made hot pepper vodka with some with habaneros, some with jalapenos, some with cayenne peppers. He made several different types and we had little bottles about this big and we gave everyone a small bottle of, of jalapeno or, you know, hot pepper vodka to be hot and it was fun. My husband would would deep fry a turkey and it turned out that by the end we were deep frying three turkeys and there were years we had one of those fryers where you have the the container and then underneath you have the the stand that has the fire in it and you hook it up to a small propane tank. So that was fun. There were years that it was so cold out that the propane, the fire could not, or uh, what was it? It didn't, it wasn't that it could not heat the oil, but it took so long to heat the oil. And then there was, there was the time when we didn't, still didn't know how big of a turkey we could cook in this thing. And we had gotten the biggest turkey we could somewhere. It was 20 or 22 pounds, something like that. It was a big turkey. You're supposed to only go 12 to 15 pounds at the very largest in these fryers. And the oil was boiling and my husband had the turkey out there. And turkeys, as you know, they, ha they have their cavities are like a tube. They just, it just goes straight through. He was trying to get the turkey in, and he had all his friends around him, and they pushed it in, and the hot boiling oil spurted up through the neck of the turkey. And luckily didn't hit anybody. So that would have been, although it was so cold, it may have been cool by then. But it, it probably still would have done some damage. Um, we usually put tiki torches out. Those are... They're meant to look tropical. You use them in the summer. They have this sort of bamboo covering, woven bamboo covering around a metal or plastic container that has the oil in it, and then they're on long bamboo stakes. And we would put them in the snow banks all around the house. We have illuminated bocce balls, so people could go out in the backyard and play bocce in the snow at night. And it was sort of free-range bocce. You take the ball, 
you have the little, what is it called, a plenty? Is that the little one? You take the little one, it was white, and you just throw it and it would go down into the snow and you just look for this glowing mound of snow and then everybody, there were four colors, red and blue and green and I guess yellow. And so then you'd, you'd just throw your ball and see if it'd get closest. You, there's no rolling involved. There's no skill other than your aim at throwing. Um, so that's what it was. And it just has gotten to be, it's, it's a lot of work. I don't especially believe that housekeeping is a virtue, although I do understand the benefits of it. It would take, you know, quite a long time to get the house cleaned up enough to invite 30 or 40 people over. And just buying all this stuff and making all this stuff and getting things ready. One, t one year my husband wanted to put a curling court in, but that was when things had gotten fairly warm and, and it was there was no freezing happening that year. So we never got a curling court built. Um, but it just, it's, it, you know, as you know, when you put on a big party, it's, it's work. So it got to where it wasn't fun, and we haven't done it for a couple years. We're thinking probably not this year, but some year we might do something where we just invite a few friends and hang out and not worry about all the other stuff. So that's Propanicus. It's about warmth, cold and warmth. We used to, oh yes, I used to make things because they were gifts of warmth. One year I made hats for everybody. One year I made, actually a couple years I made hats for everybody. One year I made scarves. One year I made mitts. Um, I think that's all, just about four years worth of stuff. And it, we just don't do it anymore. So, that's Propanicus, and what it is, and what I do, and everything. And now, I think we can move into the usual format that knitting podcasts seem to take. And I have, I have one finished object. I do. It's exciting. Actually, it was even finished this month. Um, I did the Little Bobbins Christmas Eve cast-on. And I'd been seeing this yarn everywhere, so I ordered it from England and made myself some, like I said, I'm sorry, I don't have sock blockers, but I made myself some of the, what is it, Hollyberry socks from West Yorkshire Spinners. And I used a different pattern. It's called the Groovy Socks Pattern. It's free on Ravelry. It is no longer available for download, but if you go through the project people's project pages, they put the description. It's just a two-row repeat, and um, they tell you how to do the to do the uh, ribbing so that it lines up, and it's all very simple and it goes nice. And I really like. Oops, here. We'll do this again. I really like having patterns on socks. I think it helps make them go faster. I the ones I've had that are striped, self-striping, you can see here the stripes. Um, I think it helps break that up a little, makes them a little different. And I just like that. And these I got done oh, a couple weeks ago. So they will be entered in, in the Little Bobbin, not Little Bobbins, in the Bakery Bears Cozy Socks um, Knit Along. And one of my works in progress will also be entered because it will be finished by the end of the month, which is the deadline for their um, Knit Along for prizes. So that's my finished object. Now, works in progress. I do have a sock. Now, I know everybody likes to see the knitting bags that you use, the yarn bags, the project bags. Um, this is just one of these little bags that, you know, you have the two 
Besides this I got as a Christmas gift with my knitting group and it also came with a rubber chicken which is the knitting group's gag gift. So his name is Earl. He has a cape and he's got a, an Elvis kind of set of pompadour that Elvis had with the, the hair that goes up. Um, and some gold chains. I think he has gold chains. So I had, El I had Elvis, Earl, for the next year until it was my turn to give, give him to someone, some unsuspecting friend. Um, so I, what I did with that instead of giving a project bag, because I figured, you know, if you're going to get Earl, you should get something good. I just got a, just a really plain little plastic box, tub kind of box. Um, that I thought would be good for storing things in. And then I had a, a cashmere blend yarn that I probably would not have ever used. Eh, who knows. Um, that I put in with it. And then someone got Earl and you could see her wheels spinning already. She's gonna, somebody's gonna get nailed next year with that, with Earl. So anyway, that was, that's where the project bag came from. These socks are called, I should have written it down, Porthos. And I don't remember who designed them, but she has a whole series of Three Musketeers themed socks. She has Porthos and Athos and D'Artagnan, and who is the fourth one? I can't remember his name. Anyway. These are Porthos. These are for my husband. And they are made with my potential sock base, which is a, an 80% wool, 20% nylon, but it has a very high twist. It's, the wool is merino. Um, the color is old gold. And the toe color, I know, I'm sorry, I keep bringing this up and down. The toe color is red all over. It was just a little bit. I didn't know, it's a 400 yard skein, so what is that, about 360 meters. And I didn't know if it was going to be quite enough So, for a, a man's foot. So I put the, the toe on it, but I think there's going to be plenty. Um, but I like the toe. It gives it a little, a little interest, brightness. So I have my, this is my second one. I'm into the foot about that far. I have two more pattern repeats and then I can put the toe. Here, will this help? I'll do it this way. Um, I can put the toe. It's a fairly simple pattern. It's just knits and pearls. Um, I guess it's in a way it's just a broken rib in some some ways, but it gives you this sort of little cable-y look. So this will be done over the weekend and it will be ready for different... Oops, something fell. For different knit-alongs that have a the January 31st is their deadline. So is that that oh no this is my other knitting knit, work in progress. It is a sweater. Yay. Um what is it called? Stoker or stroke I think it's Stoker. It's you sold the teague. It's the one that she has that's based on Icelandic patterns. Um, it's brown sheep wool in just a charcoal color. The, the neckline color work will be this charcoal color and a light blue, light medium blue, not real, real light, not pale, not pastel. And then a very light gray will go with that as well, a little mealish kind of gray. Um, and the other one that I have in progress, one of my goals, well, my goals this year are to knit a pair of socks every month. So I'm, I'm on track with these gold ones. Um, actually, I'm getting 
to finish this month because I finished my Christmas Eve ones. And then one of the other goals is to finish shawls that I started. I used to do a lot of lace shawls and I got kind of burned out. I love them. They're amazing and they're wonderful and they're kind of fun, but I got really burned out. So not last November, but November 2014, the Boonets group was doing a, she has a, a pattern called Fragile Heart and it's lovely. And she was doing a knit along for, to bring awareness to women's heart health and I do have some heart issues so that was it was important to me to do that so I started it and I got about this far it's I don't know uh, it's hard to hear maybe I can stretch it over this and see um I'm sure in the right side at least yes um yeah, that's a little better. So I got this far and my I have two other shawls that I'm knitting, but this is the first one I'm going to finish. So I have three shawls, so that gives me four months each to finish them, so I don't have to work too hard on them. And this is in my Lumen Lace Plus. It's a heavy lace weight. There's 600 meters for 100 grams and the color is thicker than water so it's sort of reds and purples I don't know how they're showing up um, I do hope things are focusing I may not be giving them enough time I'm sorry if I'm not um, and then the, the beads have kind of a they're kind of purpley with a, an AB finish so it, it reflects all the different colors and I thought those would be good for a heart, heart themed shawl. So hopefully I'll be able to show you that as a finished object before way too long. The only real problem with it right now, oh, this is a knitting bag I got from my knitting group. We do something we call yarn camp or knitting camp in the summer and several people live on a lake so we go to their house and just sort of chill out and have fun and have adventures all around the area with different fiber related um, places to go. Yarn shops and weavers and different different things. This is the, the biggest problem with the yarn, with this shawl. Yeah, it's barf. Um, when Robbie was young, as many of you probably know, puppies think yarn ball balls of yarn are wonderful toys. Not only do they roll around, they come apart with hardly any effort. So, yeah, he got into that one day. So I've got to, I'm, I'm going to, I was trying to do it without cutting it, but I can't. I'm going to have to cut it and sit down one day and just really untangle it. And I just, yeah, thank you, Robbie. So what else? That's works in progress. Oh, then there's upcoming things. Because I don't have any real new yarn to show. But, yeah. This is falling. And it's going to crinkle. So we like both of those things, don't we? Um... Here. This is the yarn. Does it? I see there. It is a sport weight. It's 50% yak and 50% wool. It's amazing. Um, it's from Rewa Fire Rewa Fibers. And she does amazing things. She she gets I think the fiber comes from Tibet. The the 
Yes, the, the yak fibers come from Tibet. And so this is a way to help the people there have some money, some income on their of, of their own, um, especially with the the Chinese, you know, government being in charge of them, which I don't know enough about to speak about, but um, what I do know, it does not sound like the greatest situation. Um, anyway, this is a sport weight. It's going to be a cowl. It's going to be one of those sort of tube, narrow cowls, because I love the way they bunch up. Um, and I'll show it to you as I go. It's going to have several, two, I think three cables, and then three different lace panels, simple lace panels with not a lot of holes. So it's not going to be a big airy thing. It's going to going to settle in and, and be warm. And that's exciting. I, I just, when I finish these socks, I get to start this. Because I have a whole month now to do my next pair of socks. This, so, this pair of socks I'm working on, I only had about, I guess, three weeks I had. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, a sip here. Um, so yeah, I'm excited and I will show you that because it's going to be fun. So that's that. What have we done? So that is, that's all of the traditional knitting podcast things plus some other babbling. Um, and a whiny dog. Right, Robbie? Mr. Whiny. Yes. Um, so I need to let him out. That's what he does when he needs out. So I think that's going to do it. And it's been really fun. It hasn't been nearly as frightening, disturbing, distressing as I thought it would be. It's better. I do need a monitor so I can see what's going on and hopefully not just be talking to myself and showing you guys all sorts of awful blurry things. Maybe you're just seeing my chin. I don't know. No, actually I do. I, I'm pretty sure you're seeing my whole face. Um, so I will see you again. I, I am hoping I can do this every two weeks. I, I prefer to do it when no one else is around and that could be difficult, but I'll find something to send them away for. So thank you very much and Again, I'm Sarah. On Ravelry, my name is B. Sarah. I should have said that at the beginning, shouldn't I? And I have the Propanicus Moon, the Friends of Propanicus Moon group on Ravelry. On Instagram, I am Propanicus <coughs> underscore moon. And I do have a website, propanicusmoon.com. It is very <coughs> pathetic. If you do go there, please don't call the website Protective Services because it has been highly neglected. Um, hopefully I will be getting it back together and I will let you know when that happens. Um, I know I say um a lot, I'm sorry. Something else to work on. Mr. Barky. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you for stopping in and I hope you have a great time and that everything is going well with you. Thanks. Bye.